Hello guys, this is Sushant. So welcome to your channel that is Sci Engineer. So congratulations to all of you who have got admission in the first round itself. For those who didn't get it, please don't lose your hope. There are still two rounds to go for. So as promised, from today onwards, we are going to start uploading videos on your first year of engineering subjects. So this particular video is going to be related to your basic electrical electronics. We are going to discuss one of the topics of it. So keep those likes coming and please do comment in the comment comment section below. People who are new to the channel, we are Samartha Vidya. We have been uploading various videos for engineering students and also for preparation of your engineering entrances. We are going to start videos for our JE mathematics and physics section. So please stay tuned for them. Also please do share this particular channel to all those who are preparing for the JE exam. So do subscribe to our channel to get regular updates on our channel and please hit the bell icon to never miss a notification of the uploads from our channel. So let's get going. So today we are going to discuss on one of the topic of DC circuit which is going to be mesh analysis. Now this particular analysis is very much useful in defining various parameters in a particular circuit. It is mostly applicable for a planar circuit. So let us try to understand what are the various steps in this particular analysis. Now we have to understand one term which is called as mesh. Now to understand mesh it is nothing but a loop which does not consist any other loop. Now you have to understand a loop is nothing but it will be a path on which if you follow you will be coming to the same point. That means if I start from this particular point and I go along the circuit and I come back to that particular point then that becomes a loop. But if you see that if I take this particular loop then in that I have this loop also present, this also present and this also present. So that is why it cannot be said as a mesh because a mesh is a loop in which there are no other loops present. So to understand, so basically my mesh is going to be nothing but this particular one. This is going to be one of the mesh. This is the other mesh and this one becomes the third mesh. So once you have identified the mesh, you should be able to understand that there are going to be three different variables which you have to consider. So those variables in this case are going to be your currents. So you have to understand that in the first mesh, you will be taking I1 as the current which is flowing in this direction. In the second mesh, you will be considering I2 as the current which will be flowing in this direction. And in the third mesh, you will be considering I3 as the current. Now the direction of the current will be decided by you. If you are getting a negative value for that particular current, then that means that you have taken the wrong direction. You have to reverse the direction. So once you have taken the current, then you have to write the KVL equation for that particular mesh. Like for the first mesh, let us consider KVL in mesh 1. Now if you are applying your KVL that is Kirchhoff's voltage law in the first mesh. So if you are going from this point to this point, you know that this is a voltage source. So there is a, it is going from negative to positive. So that is why it will have a positive V1 for it. Now when you come over here, you can see that the current is flowing through R1. Now through R1 there is a current which is I1 flowing downwards and I2 which is flowing upwards. So for that you will be writing it as minus of R1 I1 minus I2. The minus sign indicates that there is a drop in the voltage because whenever you are going through a resistor there is going to be a drop in voltage if you are following the path in the same direction as the current. So that is why you will be getting this particular equation for this R1. For R2, it's going to be minus of R2 into I1 minus I3. This thing will be equated to 0. Now, if you solve this particular equation, what you will be getting is, you'll be getting R1 plus R2 into I1 minus R1 I2 minus R2 I3. 
this thing will be equated to v1 so from the first mesh you are getting this particular equation you will be solving the same thing with the second mesh also so in mesh 2 you will be having another set of equation if you solve it for the second mesh you will be getting the equation as minus r1 i1 plus r1 plus r4 i2 and there is going to be minus 0 i3 is equal to you will be getting this as v2 now for the third mesh you will be getting the equation as minus r2 i1 minus 0 i2 plus r2 plus r3 i3 this thing will be equated to v3 so you will be getting three equations for three unknowns so you will be able to solve this particular set of equations so you will be getting the values of your i1 i2 and i3 so in the question whichever parameter is being asked then you will be able to find it from these variables which you have just found out so using these values for the resistance and the voltage in this particular circuit let us find the mesh currents using the mesh analysis so you can see that there are three different meshes so you will be allotting those i1 i2 i3 for the different meshes and then you will be using your kvl for your meshes so using your kvl for mesh one so you will be getting the equation as your 10 volts which is going in this way then you will be having a drop across the two kilo ohms resistance which will be i1 minus i2 then there will be a drop across this which will be <coughs> minus 1 kilo ohm i1 minus i3 this thing will be equated to 0 solving this equation you will be getting the equation as 3 kilo ohms i1 minus 2 kilo ohms i2 minus 1 kilo ohm i3 this thing will be equal to 10 so this is your equation 1 going to the second mesh the kvl in the second mesh you will be getting the equation if you so solve it using this kvl method you will be getting the equation for that particular second mesh will be in this way it will be minus 2 kilo ohms i1 plus 8 kilo ohms i2 and minus 3 kilo ohms i3 this thing will be equated to 20 volts then going for the third mesh you will be getting the equation as minus 1 kilo ohm i1 minus 3 kilo ohms i2 plus it's going to be 4 kilo ohms i3 this thing will be equal to 10 so using this three equation that is this, this second equation and this is my third equation you will be solving it simultaneously now since you are in engineering you can solve it using your calci so in your calci you will be substituting these values in the matrix format and then you will be getting the corresponding values of i1 and i2 i3 so using your calci and solving it simultaneously you will be getting this particular set of values for i1 i2 and i3 now let us say that you were asked to find what is going to be the voltage drop across this particular resistance so you wanted to find what is your voltage across 3 ohms resistance so in that case what you require is you need to find your current which is going to be flowing through the 3 ohms resistance and also your resistance of that so it's basically not going to be the current which is going through the resistance into the value of the resistance so that's going to be your 3 kilo 
so your i3 kilo ohms is nothing but the current which is i2 so it's going to be nothing but i2 into 3 kilo ohms so it's basically 0.0133 into 3000 so if you find this particular value it's going to be turn turning to 39.9 volts now in this particular subject and also your engineering mechanics the units are very much important you should know which parameter will be having which unit so thank you for watching this particular video so please write in the comment section how did you find this particular video and also what are the different topics we which we can do for you guys one point to be noted these set of videos are not restricted to only mumbai university they can be used by any first year students from any university because basically same concepts will be used anywhere else wherever you are studying so keep sharing keep liking our videos and keep watching our videos so we are from samarth vidya and this is sushant signing off we take classes for be btech and diploma students and also for 11 12 science pcmb group we also conduct group and private home tuitions so to contact us you can use our email address that is samarthavidya@gmail.com also you can visit our facebook page for samarthavidya the information are given in the description below so please do like the videos please do comment on the videos and please do share our videos so thank you keep learning keep watching and happy learning bye